Hello, Grace Fellowship family. We are so glad you have joined us here tonight for Table Talk, and welcome to our Wednesday night program. I trust you're having a great week. Are you having a great week? I am having a great week. I'm telling you, we are coming through this season, and we are coming through We're victorious. Coming through. We're we coming are through. better than we were in the beginning Amen. of it. I believe that with all my heart, and you're going to be better as well. And we thank you for joining us. We are missing you around here. It just seems so strange to come into this building and uh, nobody be here. The first few Sundays that we did the uh, online program, I just at times would catch myself going to the front door. I knew no one was going to show up, but I was so accustomed to walking through the coffee corner, walking through the hallways and down to the entrance again and again and seeing people that I just couldn't get away from that. Well, we're looking forward to the day that you are going to return and that target date right now is May 24th. That's right. And uh, that is the date, uh, the week, the governor has kind of uh, mm -hmm. opened things up. We don't have guidelines yet. We're waiting on official guidelines I know the service structure will be a little different, and we'll be announcing some things that will help you be safe, and so just watch for that. That's coming soon, and so we look forward to having you back. That is coming soon, and we'll be making announcements on that. If we happen to do two services or whatever we do, we'll make plenty of announcements so everybody can be here and everybody can be prepared. Right. And, Pastor... We've had some weather situations going on, but with weather permitting, I believe we are going to attempt a, an outdoor service. So going to attempt it. Not Mother's Day, which is this coming <laughs> Sunday, but the next Sunday. it would be a week from this Sunday. Right. If the weather is good. It cooperates. We may have a uh, drive-up, drive-in service on the parking lot uh, if all comes together for that. Now, that's not definite yet. But it's we'll, contingent on the weather. If the we'll, weather comes through, we'll come through. We'll let you know. And that means that. that's Blackberry winter that we're in right now will have to pass because it is cold it outside. It is cold outside today. It's cold. Yeah. So hopefully it'll warm back up. Yes. So we're excited about that. My, our team is excited about that if we get to do an outdoor service. We'll do a great time of worship. And we will. I'll do a little exhortation and scripture and a few things, and we'll just celebrate uh, that we're getting ready to come home. That's right. Amen. And we're going to be ready. We had a little video Sunday. You'll see it throughout the next couple of weeks. It says, we're ready for you, and we're ready for you. We're, we're ready. ready. Let me just briefly mention, I don't want to I know we've been mentioning this every program. And again, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. But if you are needing to give offerings, desiring to do so, you can give through uh, the mail, 911 TLC Lane, London, Kentucky, 40741. Give on our website, www.graceforyou.com, or the GFC app, or you can text to give, and the information's on your screen. And, of course, on Mondays, uh, the office is open to receive your offering. You can come to the door, and someone will receive it there. So that's how you give. And, again, we appreciate your continued faithfulness in giving. Amen. What you got tonight? Well, I thought we'd open up with some fun. We did some pictures a couple of weeks ago, and I was looking at some pictures online. And, Pastor, this quarantine has got people behaving peculiar. I agree. Some are being very strange. Some are. And then there's, you know, well, let's just start with some of the pictures that we have because I had some. You know, we're having to get desperate. I put on my, my post, desperate times call for desperate measures. Some of us are cutting our own hair and stuff like that. So you See, that's not a problem for me. Let's start right there. There we go. There was our hairdresser, and it was getting so desperate that I considered letting him do mine, but we've not quite reached that I'm yet. I'm going to do yours this week. This is my brother. Look at my brother. This is my brother Jonathan before his haircut that he decided to do. Go to the next. <laughs> he wanted to try to see what it would look like to be like Pastor Dale, so he kept he his He missed it. <laughs> he didn't hit it. <laughs> he missed it, Pastor says, but he went ahead and shaved the rest of it off, but he started just right down the middle. Let's go to the next one. This is Miss Mary. Oh, hey, Miss Mary, I know you're watching. Miss Mary is going to Get have me. your head. It's June. It's June Rollins, Miss well, Mary. She June put this for out that. for the world to see, so blame June. She's watching, too. So this was Mary having some fun. Let's go to the next one. Now, I'm not really sure what's going on here with Pastor Jerry Watkins. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Jerry's been changing images through it's, this whole scenario. I think he's thinking about becoming a model. Go to the next shot, Georgie. It shows 
Look at this. First he has the farmer look, and he's got this like Western thing going on. So Pastor Jerry, we're not sure what's going on with you. We d I did notice Miss Candy's not in any of these pictures. Well, she's not, is she's she? She's not. It's all Pastor Jerry. So I thought that was some fun. What's the next one? Oh, this was another haircut. <laughs> desperate times, desperate measures. This is what I think Shana did to Clay. So. Oh, you <laughs> Somebody better pray. <laughs> the sound booth is laughing. I snuck this yeah. one in on us. This is what Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Tell, I'm sitting in my chair. He's sitting in his. And all at once I get this little ding on my phone and I look and I get this. We are getting desperate in this And quarantine. there's a whole lot more, but I only show that one, Pastor. I didn't show the other one, so you can thank me for that. So anyway, then you see that side of you every now and then. He's. A little right, mischievous himself. On. Anyway, yes, we're in some desperate times, but we're not quite that desperate. I told Steve and Georgie tonight I'm ready to bring the flow bee back. And only people probably from the 80s remember the flow bee. I remember the flow bee. Y'all remember the flow bee? You attached it to your vacuum cleaner and it sucked your hair up and cut off just. I'm not sure it worked. Well, I'm not either. Of course, Pastor Dale doesn't have to worry about that anymore. So let's move on. <laughs> Look at all those smile, laughing faces on the video. <laughs> Hey, we want you guys to respond to the video I put on there. This is your community. This is your place to engage. So send us a thumbs up or a happy face. Any, any face is acceptable except that mad face. We don't want to see that. That's right. So, yeah. So, anyway, this is, we want you to engage. And they are doing that, Pastor. They are they lighting are. it up. I see on your phone. It we got the best church right in the now. world, don't we? We do. All right, church. Let's get spiritual. Are we ready? Pastor, let's open up a prayer and just take this thing into a spiritual mode. And let's get in the Word and find out who we are, what we have, what we can do. You want to lead it? I will. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your provision in this season. Thank you, Lord, that you have made us overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We declare our victory. We declare our strength is in you. Our hope is in you. Yes. And Father, we stand against all the powers and voices of the enemy, and we declare them void. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are right on target spiritually with this teaching. When the Lord put this in my spirit to teach, we had no idea that this quarantine was coming and this um, COVID-19. But it's not just that that we're battling right now. I've been talking to some people who are really facing some struggles, who are really in some battles. And what this teaching is established on, the first and foremost thing you need to understand is we're in a spiritual battle, but it's not with flesh and blood. Amen. It's not a flesh and blood battle that you're in. So I have some right now who are facing different situations during this time, Pastor, and I brought this scripture to them in Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, we have a spiritual enemy. And it may look like the person that's in the house with you or someone that you know. It may sound like them, but ultimately your enemy is the devil. That's who we're fighting. We're in a spiritual warfare. So God, God's word tells us that we're wrestling against demonic powers. Amen. That's what we established the whole first week. This is a spiritual battle. Then last week we talked about man when we were given power and authority over the earth. This thing started off with man in the garden, and we had power and authority. Matter of fact, let's look at Genesis chapter 1, and I'll read what verse 26 says. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. He said we had authority. We had authority over Amen. all the earth. That's what God had established for us. Um, and, of course, when God spoke that, it was backed up by the integrity of God's word because when God speaks something, the Bible says his word is forever, forever settled. settled. And, of course, um, Psalm 89, 34 says when God speaks and when there's a covenant established like this one in the garden, he says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone from my lips. You don't have to worry about God changing his word. Amen. What God said, it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. It's forever settled. So, that being said, Pastor, we learned last week that it's impossible for God to lie. That's what right. the Bible says in Hebrews 6, 18. It's impossible. He can't lie. If God spoke something, if God said elephants are pink, they would become they pink. They would be pink. Because there's creative power in what he says. So, God Cannot lie. It's impossible. The next thing we found from Hebrews 1.3 is 
the integrity of God's word is what makes the universe exist and hold together. It's all being held together by the word of God. I think that's so exciting. And then we learn that God will not violate what he has said. So when God said, you have authority over all the earth, he meant it. Amen. He meant it. We had authority. Man had authority. Well, things were going good until Lucifer, Satan, saw that authority. He desired it. He wanted it. Remember, God said we were made in his image. The devil was so jealous of that. We had authority. You know, we had, we had power, and the devil desired that. He desired that. He craved the power that man had been given. So he crafted a plan to steal our authority. And he would have to get man to submit to him willfully in order for the plan to work. And sadly, that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. They willfully submitted to the plan of the enemy. They did what he desired, and man lost his authority. And the Bible says Satan became the god of this world. So that brings us to lesson number three, which tonight we're going to talk about why Jesus came. And this is good stuff, Pastor. And I'm so glad you're here. Well, you know, I taught this stuff three years ago. And you were at home fighting a battle with leukemia, fighting the battle with cancer. I was. The battle that we won. And Praise we the Lord. used our authority then. We did. Over that sickness. We did. And won because Jesus had already won the battle. But we manifested the victory in the realm of the flesh here. And so thank God for this kind of teaching. Amen. Thank it's God life and death. It. It's life it's and life death. It's life and death. So I'll let you open up uh, tonight and start us with this one. Well, why Jesus came... Uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand why he had to come. Now, we think of traditionally, we think of Jesus had to come. He had to die for our sins. He came and died on the cross. But why is it that God had to do things that way? I mean, why did he have to bring his son into the earth? Why couldn't God have come up with some other means of saving us, redeeming us? There's a reason for it. And it all goes back to the foundation in Genesis and actually before Genesis. You know, Genesis gives us the record of the creation of the world, uh, earth, creation of man. But really, uh, the Bible says Jesus was a lamb slain from the foundation exactly of right. the world. Amen. This was prior to Genesis. That's uh, right, the foundation. Prior to creation, right. prior to the fall God had already declared Jesus being a lamb slain. So the reason God had to move through this process was, it goes back to what you were saying, man was created to have authority in the earth. Right. And that could not change. It was impossible for it to change. God established it with his own word. The human race would have authority on this planet. And it would be, of course, underneath God's authority. He would be the supreme authority but what would take place on this planet, specifically at that time in the garden, would have to be under the jurisdiction of the human race or mankind. Well, when man gave his authority away, Satan gained that authority. Now, for God to come on the scene into the earth realm and to win the human race back, win the authority back, and to achieve redemption, right. the only way was for him to have a man who could operate on his behalf or in his stead right here in the planet that is supposed to be dominated and ruled by the human race. And man, because the Bible says God is a spirit. Spirit. He's a spirit. So he had So to a spirit couldn't come mm -hmm. down into the earth realm and rule and reign where human bodies were supposed and to be reigning. A lot of people don't understand that because no. they think God can do anything, but there's one thing God is bound by, his own law. He's bound by his, his law. His law, his word. His word. That's exactly right. Yes. So God became a man and God sent his son Jesus into this earth in a flesh and blood body. He became a physical human being. Right? He did. This and is the only way that God could save mankind. It's the only way that we could get back our authority was for that. Some, uh, if God could be born into the human race. Hallelujah. All right. And, and at Christmas we celebrate, you know, we talk about his name is called Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. Mm -hmm. He didn't just come to be with us. He became one of us. 
right. Now here, there is a difference, and I've got to point this out. He never sinned like the rest of us, <laughs> and but that, he did become one of us. He did. And before we get into that, let's look at what, because God needed a sinless man to accomplish what had to be accomplished. So look at what Ezekiel says, and read that for us, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel twenty-two thirty, 30, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Now really what this verse is saying in Ezekiel is God sought all of the earth. Right. And you know, he found certain men That's at right. certain times that could do certain things. For instance, Noah found grace right. in the eyes of the Lord and was saved on the ark with his house. But if you follow the story till the end, when Noah got off the boat, he became drunk and terrible things happened. Hmm. All right. God uh, used Moses, but Moses was not a sinless person. They were not sinless men. Abraham was not sinless. At their best, they were still sinful. That's exactly right. So, I sought for a man among them. And then he goes down at the end and says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I should not destroy, but I found none. So, on the earth, there was none. Nobody to be found, which would mean simply this. That man would have to be a God man who would come from heaven. Right. Isaiah says the same thing. Read that one. 59. Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Intercessor is a go-between one that stands in the gap. It says, therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness has sustained him. Mm -hmm. So here again, he sought for a man and, and knew there was no man on the planet so he had to send a man who would become the arm of his salvation and the arm of his righteousness, and that would be Jesus. Right. There was no sinless person able to bring God's righteousness into this earth. No sinless person could be found. He had to come save us himself. Himself. He had given dominion of this world to physical human beings, so he had to become one. And there were prophecies that... that foretold of him coming, this perfect, this perfect man, this God man, prophecies were given for 4,000 years before he arrived. You imagine 4,000 years, all, 4, the years. all the prophets that prophetically declared Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming, and you can read them. You can read from Isaiah, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. all these different prophets. Even in Genesis. You get, yeah, all the way back, prophetic utterances that were spoken mm -hmm. in regard to the Messiah, Jesus coming. And uh, that word, it's interesting, anytime God gets ready to do something, he always does it with the word. The word is his seed, all right? So uh, what did he do in the creation? When God wanted something to be created, you go back to Genesis God said, let, let there, there be, be, and then there was. That's right. But everything God does, he does through the word. So he began sowing uh, over these 4,000 uh, years prophecies. He sowed all of these words until that word would eventually manifest and wouldn't just be a seed, it would be a harvest, and that harvest was Jesus. Right. Amen. So... John 1 uh, gives us great insight on that. Verse 14 says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word. The Word. The Word that had been spoken of, the Word of God, but the Word that God had proclaimed for 4,000 years. You know, the angel took all of those prophecies, Pastor, the spoken words of God, and the Word entered into Mary's womb. Yes. And that's how Jesus was conceived, if by you, the Word. If you go back to John 1, uh, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it refers to God being the Word, the word. Jesus being the That's Word. Right. The Word was God, the Word was with God. But the most powerful right. verse right there, verse 14, that Word, which was God, the Lord Jesus, became flesh. or took on flesh. And when it took on flesh, now it's no longer just a word. It Hallelujah. is a manifestation of the word. And that word is living and breathing. And that actually happened when Jesus was conceived. Then 
Mary gave birth, and we have a breathing, living Jesus. Hallelujah. The Word of God made flesh living on the planet. Amen. And for and again, it is the the God man. He was the God man. You know, he's called the God man because he was the Son of God. He was the Son of Man. Right? He represents the Son of Man. When it talks about that, when it calls him that, it represents the physical side. And when it talks about him being the Son of God, that emphasizes his divinity. Jesus, like you said, existed before the worlds ever began. He, he was. He, he was existed here. in that world. Yes. He was, he was with the Father at creation. Then he exists in our world. Mm -hmm. All right, this is just amazing when you think about it. So he, he was there with God as the Son of God, came to the earth, represented the Father in all forms, but is the Son of God, but more so on the earth, he's the Son of Man. And, and really, everything that Jesus did in the earth realm, he right. did it as the Son of Man, anointed by the Holy Ghost and through That's the exactly authority right. given by the Father. There's something else I think people have a misconception of. They certainly do. You know, he was in the flesh. He was the Son of Man on this earth. Yes. He had to operate through a body just like we do. He and, did. And matter of fact, he was our example in our everything example. that he did for us to follow. So. Look at Colossians 1, 16 and 17. This is what the Bible says. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things exist. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that just stirs me up. It just puts it all in him. It's in him. All of it is in him. And... Uh dominions and principalities, powers, they were all created in him and for him. So as you as you think of him being the son of God, he was fully the son of God. He was fully the son of man. But why now, with all that being said, we go back to what we said at the beginning and what we talked about last week, mm -hmm. that the whole purpose in him coming was to bring restoration Hallelujah. to what was lost right. by Adam at the fall. Mm -hmm. God never intended for the human race to be ruled over by the devil. Hallelujah. He never created the human race to be weak, Amen. sick. We weren't created to die. Mm -hmm. We were not supposed to die until the fall, then death came on the scene. Mm -hmm. So all of these things were stolen from us as the human race. We really, Adam gave it away, just gave it away. Right. And so now God, through Jesus, comes to take back what Hallelujah. the first man, Adam, lost right. so he can restore that authority back to you and I. And the vast majority of the body of Christ has no clue about this. All we think that has happened is that Jesus died so, we so that go to <laughs> when we get to heaven, then it will all be restored. But I want to tell you, the greatest revelation that I have seen, and I am living in it day by day, and I am extremely excited about it, is that we can have some heaven right here on earth. Amen. And I'm having it. <laughs> That's right. You better pick it up. Hallelujah. Or I'm going to take it over. <laughs> All right. So Jesus came to take back and to get back for us the authority that man had. And he got it. He back. got it. Hallelujah. The authority that All had right. been surrendered, he came to get it back. So Can we pause for just another moment there? <laughs> because this bears so much need, needing to be said. Jesus faced the tempter just like Adam and Eve faced the tempter. Satan. Satan came to Eve in the garden, deceived the woman. The man was not deceived, is what the word says, but, but regardless, he walked straight into it. Yes, he did. Jesus had an encounter with the same devil, but when the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus won and overcame the devil, whereas yeah. Adam was defeated by the devil. Right. So Jesus maintained authority where uh, Adam lost authority, and so, yes, he did regain that authority. To restore what There's was lost. There's one scripture that talks about the first Adam and then Jesus being the second Adam. Yes. That came and did it right. And what you need to see out of that, and that wasn't in your lesson, so, but 
what we see out of that passage is that what the first Adam, Adam, did, Jesus came to change, to restore, to fix. And everything has been restored. There, there, you know, there are some things that we will not receive in full until we do get our brand new body. Mm-hmm. I have my new spirit. That's right. I will have my new body. Amen. Now, my new spirit through authority, can bring blessing to this body. That's right. And long life to this body. Mm-hmm. Okay? But this body's still going to age. But this body's still age. Decay. Ages. It will, you know, eventually. When we're 120, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Jesus came to take back and to get it for us. I mean, what, what, everything that Jesus obtained on this earth was for us. Let's look at John chapter 5, verse 26 and 27. It says, for as the Father hath life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Now look at that, Pastor. Not because he's the Son of God. He gave him authority to execute judgment here because he's the Son of Man. Okay, now I'm going to give a thought on that. Okay. Because, again, it makes it very clear that passage is referring to what he has authority to do as the son of man in the earth. Mm-hmm. And I believe what it's saying here is Jesus coming into the earth and functioning like the first man, Adam, right. should have been functioning, executed uh, dominion, judgment, mm-hmm. and so on. Um, and he did it because he did not relinquish his authority. He maintained his authority given to him by the Father at all times. He never surrendered it. And the devil tried that. He never lost it. There's another verse, I don't know exactly where it is, that says uh, when Jesus is preparing, he, he knows he's about to be arrested. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing, no place place or nothing in me. Mm -hmm. And what he was saying is, the thief is coming, the devil is coming, right? but he has found nothing in me. He couldn't get a stronghold, he couldn't get access. In the first Adam, he came and found something. He did. And through what he found, the willingness to surrender, he gained authority. Right. Jesus gave him no place, and so uh, Jesus maintained complete authority over the enemy at all times. At all times. At all times. Let's look at 1 Timothy 3.16, what it says. This is the NLT. It says, without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations he was believed, believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. It's talking about how that, this is, the, this is the great mystery. You know, Christ was revealed, the God of heaven was revealed in a human body, seen by angels, announced to the nations, believed on throughout the world. And when he, became, when he came in this human body, this human body, now he had power and authority on this earth. Because remember, on this earth, you have to have a body to work through. Like we said, um, you know, the devil can't do nothing without a body to work through. Well, there has to be a body for, for the Lord to work through here on this earth as well. Um, for instance, I don't know if we said last, night, last week, but I know I said it in one of the weeks when I taught this before the um, quarantine, that Paul had authority on this earth. But right now, you and I have more authority than Paul because we have a body Absolutely. on this earth. Paul's words that he left behind has authority, but Paul himself no longer has a body. None at all. So right now, because we have this body, we have the authority on the earth with Jesus in us. So Jesus was embodied power, embodied authority, working in the earth realm. He gave that authority over to the 12, to another 70, and then to the church which is his body. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to be operating in the same authority that Jesus left to the early church. And this is why Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do, and not just the works I do, you're going to do greater works. Now imagine 
How could they be greater than what Jesus did? Well, for one thing, Jesus was one that's on the exactly earth. Right. Then he added 12, and that's still just 12 plus Jesus. Then the 70, you're still in numbers, just, just certain numbers. But now the body of Christ, if the church would ever get a hold of who they are and really become who they are and who God sees them as they're supposed to be, I'm telling you, we would be operating in such a level of authority. Um, we would see signs and wonders tremendously. But, you know, back when I was young, um, when I was a, a teenager and young in church, and they would say we're the body of Christ, I would think of that like a body of believers, a body a of... A vast number. Uh, right. But I didn't perceive that my hands are the hands of Jesus. Right. And they are. I remember when we got that revelation. Do you, I don't remember exactly when we did. But. We were in Atlanta, and uh, we were reading the book of Ephesians. And each night we were reading and we were praying. And, man, oh, yeah, it was like a light I bulb now. went off in our spirit. We are the body of Christ. The body. We're the body of Christ. Right. When he His was body. on earth, he had a body. When he left that body, when he goes back into heaven, he left another body on this planet. We're his body filled with his spirit, given his authority, and we ought to be doing the works that he does and greater works. And if we are not, it is not his fault or his lack. It's with us if there is a lack. That's right. So right there where you are right now, look at somebody in that room. If nobody's there, say it right now. Say, I am his body. I am his body. Look at somebody say, did you know I'm his, his body? body? I'm his body. Put it on Facebook. <laughs> Come on. Put it on there. You're the body of Christ. That ought to excite you. Your hands are his hands. Your voice can be his voice. Your feet can be his feet. And he can flow through you just like he flowed through his own body when he was here on this earth. Amen. So we're the body on the earth. Jesus came for this purpose. 1 John 3, 8 says, for this purpose is why Jesus came. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, nobody would argue that while he was here, he destroyed the works of the devil. Right. I mean, he really destroyed sickness. the works of the devil. If sickness showed up, he destroyed it. Death. If, uh, if people were demon-possessed, oh, if people had mental uh, distress, sin, he just destroyed one work right after another. We, as his body, should be destroying the works of the devil in, on this planet. Amen. Amen. I've come to destroy the works of the devil. That's right. My, through what Jesus has made available to me. That's what the church should be doing, and uh, we're missing it. <laughs> All right, but we're learning how to do that. We're learning. Because well, you can't do it if you don't know you got it. That's exactly right. Ignorance yeah. can keep you yeah. from, from, from functioning the way that God wants you to. So he came to destroy the works of the devil. So we were in a mess, a hot mess when the Lord showed up. I mean, we, were, we had sickness, we had disease, we had oppression, we had poverty, all kinds of things that the curse brought upon mankind. We were dealing with those things. But Jesus became our substitute in the battles that the devil, that you know, that could overwhelm us, Pastor. In other words, like... In our battle with sin, the Lord Jesus took our sin on the cross. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And um, it says he has made him to be sin who knew no sins, what 2 Corinthians says. He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He became sin so I could become righteous. He became sickness so I could become healed. He, be, you know, he took my sin. So in our battle with sickness, he took our sickness. You know, Pastor, for years we didn't know that. We knew God could heal, but we did not know that at the same time, we really didn't have a good understanding that the exact same time our salvation was accomplished, our healing was accomplished at the same time. It was, and I don't, I do not know why, other than uh, religion mm -hmm. is an answer to a lot of these things and tradition. But the church differentiates forgiveness of sin and healing. We put it on two different levels. Jesus never, ever put it on two different levels. To him, forgiveness and healing went together. And uh, when people were told to go preach the kingdom, 
they were always instructed in the preaching of the kingdom to go heal the sick. That's true. These two went together. In one place, Jesus said, which is easier to say, mm -hmm. thy sins be forgiven or Take rise care. and be healed? You know, which is easier? Well, the truth is he can do either one. They both go together. When we do healing school, very soon when we're back together, one of the things we are going to focus on is the fact that all of this, healing and forgiveness, equally go together in the atonement. Hallelujah. Amen. It's already been provided for. He's already paid the price. Um, Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed is what Isaiah we says. Are. Peter said, by his stripes, you were healed. Now, you know, some people don't want to make a lot to do out of those two word differences. Mm -hmm. They say that doesn't mean anything. Well, it does. Because they were on two different sides of the cross. Amen. Isaiah is on that side of the cross. Peter's on this side of the cross. On that side of the cross, Isaiah was looking forward to what Jesus would do. Peter saw it being past tense Hallelujah. as done. What he you had done. were healed by his stripes. We were healed. Hallelujah. So... In our struggle to overcome grief and sorrow, Isaiah said, Surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. Not only did he carry your sins, not only did he carry your sickness, he carried our grief and our sorrows. That's why, All you know, we do grieve, but not as this world does. Nope. It's different. You know, and, and it's not, it, it, grief should not stay with us for a lifetime. No. We go through that, but we do come on the other side. Jesus bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. Then he said, I, I'm going to do that for you. So he said in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. My peace I give unto you. So he took my griefs and he left me his peace. In our struggle to have provision on this earth, hallelujah, he took you our provided. poverty. He took our poverty. It's not God's will for us to be poor, Pastor. And there's, there's this ignorant teaching it that is. poverty is a blessing. Total ignorance. Ignorance. I, pardon me if I get a little bit uh, emotional about that. It's all right. But there is probably nothing that gets me more than someone in the body of Christ that is promoting the church being poor or the body of Christ being poor. And if you want to stir somebody up, you let them think that you're getting ahead. At right. all. But and God wants us to be blessed. <laughs> he wants us to be blessed. And, you know, for the longest time, um, especially ministers, ministers were supposed to be poor, and that was a sign of humility and a sign of being humble. And uh, <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> tell it. Preach it. <laughs> I'm not saying it. I'm going to discipline my flesh. But I remember one time... Um, we believe in being blessed, and we know God wants the man and woman blessed. of God blessed. Whether you're in ministry or whether you're a child of God, God wants you blessed. I believe He wants every member of the body of Christ to be blessed. Blessed That's to be a blessing will, and not be in poverty. Right? You should. You know, wealth is when you have enough for your needs and then enough to help somebody else with theirs. Yes. So I remember one time, Pastor, when we were um, looking at getting a home and we were elevating. The Lord was blessing us. We've been in ministry for 35 years. Mm -hmm. You know, if you work on any job for 35 years, you should be advancing. You should be. So we were getting a, a nice home, and I remember uh, my dad had grew up with that old mentality, that old mindset that preachers were supposed to not have nothing, you know, and just yeah, barely get by. And he said, he told me one day we were at his house, and he said, Patty, and, and listen, let me just say, we never had any words with our parents. I never had an ill word with pastor's parents. He's never had... Too many with mine. <laughs> so he says, Patty, you know what you're doing? He says, you're getting above your raisin. And I'll never forget. He said, you're getting above your raisin. I remember Dale jumps up off the couch and says, well, praise God. We've been trying to get above our raisin. We believe the Lord wants to bless us and to elevate us. Well, and it hit me. It hit your spirit. It hit it? my spirit when he spirit. said that, you know. And uh, it hits my spirit when I hear people trying to say, that we're not supposed to have anything. We're supposed to barely make it through. And if you do have anything on this planet, well, you can't be godly. That's Can you impossible. just real quickly, I know it's not part of the lesson, but share what you shared with me the other day about if Jesus had been poor and it had nothing and, you know, the poorest of poorest. When he told these businessmen, come follow me, 
And he had absolutely nothing. I mean, well, religion has painted an image of Jesus as being the most lowly, uh, poor person from birth. I mean, I grew up in the church where we did Christmas plays, and we always did the play and declared there was, you know, he didn't get a stay in the inn. He had to stay in the stable because he wanted to come and stay in the stable so he could relate to everybody, all right, poor. But that's not what the Word says. The Word does not say Mary and Joseph could not afford the inn. No, they were looking. The words, yeah, that's exactly right. They, were they must have had money to pay the hotel. Pay bill. the taxes, and there was no room. That's exactly in right. In the end, there's a big difference in that. Mm -hmm. But then, as we move on through uh, the life of Jesus, uh, you think about Jesus, uh, the people who followed him, mm -hmm. tax collectors would drop what they were doing and follow him. Physicians. Luke was a physician. Luke was a physician. Mm -hmm. You think of Peter who was a businessman. Business we man. think of a fisherman as what we think of as a country fishing guy. It's not, you know, wasn't that's leisurely not, fishing. He was a fisherman by trade that's with right. his own boats, that's right? ships that, they, that were called, and he was making a good living at this, but he dropped what he was doing to follow Jesus. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Uh, men of that stature don't just drop everything they're doing to follow a beggar on the street. No. Jesus had resources. You know, if one of these beggars showed up, they had these signs, you know, we we'll work you for food. You wouldn't follow him. We wouldn't follow him. You might give him an offering, but you're not going to drop your business and follow him. Right. Now, I know some will disagree with what I'm saying. Well, just remember one thing. There was a treasure. There was a treasure. There was a treasure. His ministry had enough funds that they needed a treasure. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, uh, uh, I believe it was at that point. It might have been another story. But G Judas went out, and they assumed that Jesus had sent him to give money to the poor. Why would they assume that? Because they had watched Jesus send Judas as the treasure so to good. give so many times before. So Jesus, uh, now somebody would point out, well, the Bible says he became poor that we might be made rich. You had that scripture in there, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. says, uh, yet for your sakes he became poor that through his poverty we might be rich. When did he become poor? I'll tell you when he became poor. When he took our poverty. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> He Woo! became poor Hallelujah. when he took our poverty at the cross at the same time he took our sin and he took our curse and poverty is in the curse, in the curse. and never, ever is proclaimed as the blessing. No. He took that poverty. That's when he became poor. We'll come back and teach on that because there's other scriptures too that people might ask about, but we, you can right. back up, you know, that he Some of this poor. is in the teaching we did on uh, uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the name of that series, but we did a series last year, and it's online that they can find. So some of this is in there. So he took our poverty. Yes. So we could be made rich is what Second Corinthians says. Now, people have a problem with the term rich. So let's just, for those that might have a big issue with that, Let's just say it like this. So you've got enough for your needs and money left over to give to others. Blessed at least. to be a blessing. But although I have to point out, over and over the scripture talks about abundance. God is a God of abundance. He is. And you know, he wants his children blessed. Blessed. We represent him on this earth. We, we do. We, and some of us, you and know. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give another word right there. Okay. It is not a good representation I look out here, you drive out through communities, and there will be this dilapidated shack with a sign on it says, the house of the Lord. That's the truth. Well, surely to goodness, we could get enough money together to at least paint the building, cut the grass, cut the grass. plant some shrubs. Amen. Because most of the people would not allow their own house to look like that. No. But we'll put a house out on a field somewhere and put a sign up, church of God. Church of the living God. Right. 
church, house of the Lord, house of prayer, and that's and you know, supposed to draw people. Pastor, that's not much difference than the man showing up with the sign, we'll work for food. You know, nobody's going to follow him. Nobody wants to go to a church like that either. So we need to represent him better. Start with what you have. Do the best with what you have. Amen. If you don't have a great facility, do the best with it because it belongs to him. All Amen. right. So he became poor that we might be blessed and become rich. Um, in our conflict with the devil, before the Lord came, there was a conflict. But the Bible, you know, he took our conflict, he defeated the devil, and he gives to us his triumph. What he accomplished, he gives us the ability for that. Let's look at is it Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise partook of, of the same. Listen, that through his death, through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Amen. So then Mark 16, 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that, that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. He destroyed him that had the power of death, the devil. And he gave us, those who are, who are believers, the right to cast out devils. So, And we do that in his authority. Right. As his representative he, right. in his authority because he already defeated the enemy. He did. Already defeated. So really what we do, we fight from a position of victory. His victory that was won at the cross. Right. We cast devils out from the position of authority gained at the cross. We drive out anything to do with the devil sickness, anything, anything, poverty, we force that out and resist that based on the victory achieved at the cross that Jesus won on our behalf. I'm no match for the devil in myself, but with Jesus, in Jesus, he in me, I'm in him, the devil is no match for me. That's right. And the reason he's not any match for us is because when Jesus rose from the dead, he had authority in heaven, authority in earth, in earth, and authority under the earth, meaning the demonic realm and hell. He had that authority. Let's look at Philippians 2, verse 10. It says that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. I think that verse is just, again, de declaring what you just said. Now, authority is in all Realms. levels. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, some people would have an issue with this, but God's authority, he had supreme authority. Don't get me wrong. He's God. There's right. no one like him, no one compared to him as the supreme uh, God that he is. N nobody is like that. Mm -hmm. However, there were limits as to what his authority could do in the earth realm prior to Jesus being here. Right. Because of the authority lost in Adam, the human race. And so you want to find out where a lot of the trouble, where the trouble came in? The human race that was fallen. This is where this stuff came in and through the devil. But Jesus now regains and has all authority in all realms, heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And you know, even in Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, this is before the crucifixion, Jesus came, no, this was, let's see, it was after. This was after. after. This was the uh, this was after. Great Commission. Right. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority all. has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All. Go, right, all. <laughs> He says, go therefore, and earth. go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He had all authority, right? I think what he was saying right there, he was making that declaration, I won, I've won the battle at the cross, I have defeated the devil, I have took the keys away, I have now authority in heaven, heaven. and I have authority on earth. Now I'm sending you. Go therefore. You go do go it. Go therefore because I have that authority. Well, that's good. Therefore means in light of what I just said. In light of what I just said is what mm -hmm. that word therefore means. Therefore go make disciples. In other words, he's saying I am delegating that power to you to do my works. 
I've got the power. I'm delegating it to you to go and do my works. Amen. Amen. And that goes back. You've got those verses there. Go ahead and read those if you like. Okay. Matthew 10, 1. When he called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Yes. And then Matthew 10, 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, say, and the kingdom is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, that's where he delegated authority to the disciples and, and those on earth. But going back to Matthew 28, he that's gave it. it to every believer. He gave it back. He gave it to us. So we got back everything, everything. that Adam lost and more. We now have authority over the demonic realm. Yes. We have authority over demons. We do. Over all the power of the devil. We have authority over him. Amen. So there's no demon you should be afraid of. No demon to be scared of. We have authority. Oh, greater is he that's in me Amen. than he that's in this, this world. This is good. Hallelujah. So we have the power of God. Jesus gave us power and authority over the devil. Power and authority means that we have the ability and the right. We have rights over the devil. We have power. We have authority. James 4, 7 says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Now listen, who resists the devil? We do. We do. What happens when we resist him? He flees. What happens when we don't? He stays. He stays. <laughs> He stays. So people are like, Pastor, pray for me. I just need, remember, I remember one time we was, we was having a prayer line, and this man was really struggling. This was back 30 years ago. It's hard to believe we're that mature. But this man was struggling. He comes up, and he was wanting prayer, and he just says, Preacher, oil me. And he, was having a, he wanted you to anoint him because he was having a big battle with the devil. He says, oil me. Listen, you don't need some preacher to oil you or to anoint you. You have power. You have authority over the devil. You resist him. That's right. That means stand firm against him. Stand against him. And, and that verse means you do it. That's right. you got to do it. You Doesn't, do it. And, and see, a lot of people are asking God to do it. That's God, exactly will you please, right. Lord, will you please get this devil off my Move back? Move this and, demon. Well, we're going to fast 40 days and see if God will get the devil off our back. Or, oh, this is a big You devil. fast 80 days and he'll still be on your back. Preach. Amen. Until you resist him. Stand firm against him. That word resist. Stand get him firm off. against. Amen. Um, I heard Jesse Duplantis say many years ago, you know, we're told to resist the devil, but too many people are trying to assist <laughs> the devil. So we don't assist him, we resist him. That's right. So many Christians during times of trouble, they come up and say, Lord, please change the situation. Lord, I'm begging you. I am begging you. Lord, remove this sickness. Lord, prosper me financially. They're asking God to do all the things that God has already told us. And God's not going to do what he told you to do. He will not. He will not. He's not going to do it. They don't realize that and God so. has given us this authority. So we're begging God to do things he told us to do Right. when we have the authority to do it. So we must use our authority. In the Gospels, Jesus never commanded his disciples to pray for the sick. Listen to this, Pastor. Listen, Jesus never commanded his disciples to pray for the sick. Nope. He commanded them to heal the sick. That's right. He said, heal them. Luke 9, 2, he sent them to preach the kingdom of, the, of God and to heal the sick. He sent them to heal. Luke 10, 8, 9, and into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you and heal the sick that are therein. Uh, I did a study through last year. I believe it was part of the healing school. We went through a whole session in Acts and uh, at how many times they spoke to sickness and disease. For instance, the first miracle in the early church was the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. And Peter said to him, silver and gold have I none, such as I have I give unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, right. rise and walk. But he didn't pray about it. He declared in authority, right. get up, rise and walk. Right. People, people say stuff like, you know, well, I couldn't heal a flea or I couldn't heal a gnat. No, we can't. But as children of God, we don't operate in our human power. We operate in his delegated power. And there is a prayer of faith that heals the sick in uh, James 5.14. Mm -hmm. But the prayer of faith that Still. will save the sick will be a declaration of authority. That's exactly right. People say, well, you know, we're just human. But listen, Pastor, we aren't only human. We're born again. That's right. We are born again. We're not just in our human power. We're born Amen. again, children of God. So we, God gave us power and authority. So Praise God. I know we're, we're winding up. But listen, we need to use what's been given to us. 
Use what's been given to us. We can pray. We can believe. Speak the word of God. And listen, when you're in a battle, as we close, when you're in a battle, only speak words that align with God's word. Because what you see is people declaring healing. Then they declare sickness. Then they declare a miracle. Then they declare the doctor's report. Declare what the word of God says. Don't let anything move you from that declaration. Stay aligned with God's word. And that's what will produce your miracle. Amen. That's our covenant. Amen. Amen. So this is week number three. We got several weeks ahead. And I hope you're enjoying this. But right now, just say it again. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. I have authority. I have authority. Jesus gave it to me. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to take my authority. I'm going to take my I'm going to walk in my authority. I'm going to walk in my authority. So devil, get out of my way. So devil, get out of my way. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what I have. I know what I have. And you are defeated. And you are defeated. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Join us on Sunday. 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 Join us. Get your stuff ready Sunday morning at 1030. Be ready to have praise and worship. And I'm telling you, Pastor, the Spirit of God's in this house. It is. I mean, we're up here worshiping, and the house is filled with Spirit. So join us Sunday. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. you.